We're back with you in the Law 938 Live. I'm Keith D'Souza. I'm speaking with senior mediator Dana Grossman. Of course, Dana has was a lawyer in criminal proceedings in another life. She's come to Singapore and she's now a mediator. She works with the Singapore uh, Mediation Center. She's also a mediator on her own. And if you can check, well, not check her out, check her work out at mediate.com. Dot sg mediate is m e d letter eight dot com dot sg we're talking about the process of mediation some of her tough cases and the benefits of mediation dana you said the mediation process is something that a client or a person embarking on it has control of over the process tell us a little bit more about that why they can choose to accept it or disregard it is that right Yes. Basically, when they come to mediation, as we said before, they bring their issues to the table. By having a mediator, they actually brought in someone neutral that doesn't take sides and has only one goal, to help them reach a mutual agreement. It doesn't force them to do anything. I don't tell them what is wrong and what is right, and mm-hmm. I'm not playing a judge. Right. But you are walking the thin line between two parties. Do both parties have to agree on an assigned uh, mediator, on a specific mediator, or are there two parties like a lawyer representing each side? It goes like that. First of all, there are a few options. Some cases, they choose mediation Mm -hmm. before going to court. So they need to to decide and to agree on a a mutual mediator. Now, the lawyers can, uh, can give recommendations, or if they don't go to lawyer, and you know, it's even better if it's at the beginning of the process, right. they should look up for someone that they either heard recommendations of or they know, and they should agree on. Otherwise, they can't make it. It's on a volunteer basis that you come to mediation. The other option is what you, when you go to court, and the court sends you to mediation, right? So that's what I do. Mm-hmm. Often... We do mediation at the chamber of, uh, in the court, at the subordinate court, or the, uh, the Supreme Court is not that often. Um, so the judge actually sent the parties to be mediated so they can reach a mutual agreement. So it saved the time for them and for him, and definitely a better solution because they can play with the issues on the table. They can actually say what is important for them, what are their needs, not only the option, you know, they put an option on the table, and it can come from emotions, right? He owes me $100,000, and that's it. I'm not going to negotiate. I'm not going to agree. But if you look what happened, mm-hmm. what is really his entitled of, what he thinks he's entitled of, what he really feels he needs to achieve in this meeting, then you put those real needs on the board, and you try to put it in a positive manner, an objective manner. So if it's about he betrayed me and he misbehaved, etc., then I will put on the board... Okay, so I understand there is a, a case of trust or relationship, you know, like neutral words that sure. will help them focus on the positive. So it's either you come by yourself or the lawyers, are, uh, you know, tell you to go and try it or you have a clause in your contract that tells you that you must mediate before it escalates to court. Right. So by that, they actually give you, you know, like uh, an escape. Do not escalate because then you must you know, you never you know how pay. it's going to end. <laughs> you must pay a lot. <laughs> and, you know, we always say, if I'll drag you to court, you most likely say, adios, I don't want to work with you anymore. So if you're an important client or a partner or whatever, I'm going to lose you. But if I'm going to go with you mutually, equally to mediation, and the mutual mediation will treat us both equally, no matter what our background is and who represent us, then I will respect your needs. I don't have to agree to them, but I will respect you as a person, as a mature person coming to the table. And most likely, we can keep our relationship afterwards. It's very powerful. Having said that, how mature are the parties? The parties. <laughs> <laughs> Some you of said them yelling at each other, and they're yelling at you. No, it's okay. It's okay mm. to yell, and it's okay to show your frustration. It's a part of the equation, you know, it's, and it's fair enough. I highly respect people that share. It's easier to work with them. People mm-hmm. that are poker face or very observed and very quiet, it's hard to understand what they want and what they really need. And it takes a bit longer, which is fine. That's why we have the private session for in order to have a more discreet atmosphere and they can share with me things that they don't want to share with the other party but I will know how to present it in a way that it's okay in order to move forward towards a solution and speaking about control if we try to close it and to say like the bottom line 
when you come to mediation, you choose the mediator, you know how much you're going to pay, you know roughly how long it's going to take, you can maintain the relationship so you don't lose control over that, and you yourself, with the mediator and the other party, put the agreement in writing so you agree from the beginning what's going to be in the agreement. And later, when you see the agreement incomplete, you decide if it's for your own best or not. Most likely it will be. That's what the race showing, right? Mm -hmm. Because you were a part of the process and we did that together. But if for some reason you understand or you believe that it's not for your best, it's okay either to come again and try again or to go back to court. It's up to you. Being to, trying to be litigious here, if I sign on the dotted line, supposedly everything is honky-dory, as they say, and then I reject it after that, is that document legally binding? Look, the minute you sign an agreement, it's mm -hmm. an agreement. Okay. It's a contract. Okay. It, if you came from court, this contract goes back to the judge, okay. and that's the verdict. If you came with your partner to me, and you reach a mutual agreement, you agreed to sign it, and you signed it, it's a contract. Okay. You want to break a contract, you're going to face another dispute. So, you know, that's why you have, it's a process that the control is within your hand. Just act wisely and reach a good ag agreement for yourself. On that note, Dana Grossman, thank you so much for joining us uh, this morning. You're coming back next week to tell us a whole lot more about mediation, perhaps what makes a good mediator, and we're going to tell you some juicy stories as well. We will try to elicit the juicy stories <laughs> out of Dana next week on You and the Law. Once again, Dana Grossman, CEDA Mediator at Mediate, where she is the director. Check the Facebook page. It's spelled M E D 8 in a numeral, dot com, dot SG, and see if mediation is for you. We'll come back, talk some more about mediation next week on You and the